Okay, so that was the traditional method for uh, proportions. We can also do the p-value method for proportions as well. So it's the same steps that we did in the other two sections. Um, to get your p-value though in your calculator, you're gonna go to one prop z test. So you'll go to uh, stat, go over to tests, and then just scroll down a little bit and you'll see uh, one prop z test. Other than that, all the steps are the same. Okay, example three says, a statistician read that at least 77% of the population opposed replacing $1 bills with $1 coins. To see if this claim is valid, they select a random sample of 80 people and found that 55 were opposed to replacing the $1 bills. Level of significance is 0.01. Test the claim that at least 77% of the population are opposed to the change. Use the p-value method. Okay, so p-value method, uh, it's the four steps. So step one, we'll state our hypotheses. So this one is saying that at least 77% is what they think the claim is or what they are claiming. So no matter what, I have to put the equals in the null. This is one of those trickier cases. So I'm gonna put 0.77 or equals 0.77 in the null. And then remember, at least typically in math means greater than or equal to, but that's not one of my options that I'm allowed to use. So this was that case I talked about back in 8.1 where you're gonna flip the sign, take away the equal to part. So it's just gonna be that P is less than 0.77 and then your claim is gonna be the null, okay? Cause that shares the equal part, so. Hopefully that made sense to you. Uh, let's see, step two, you're gonna go to one prop Z test in your calculator. So stat, test, go down to one prop Z test. And then uh, we're gonna type everything in here. So P naught is the 0.77. X is the number of people in the sample who favor replacing $1 bills. So that's the 55. Uh, N is the total number of people in the sample, so 80. And then make sure that you select the sign that's in the alternative. So you want to select uh, less than P naught. Click Calculate. Uh, P value always goes to four decimal places. So you, you get 0 0.0398. So with the P value method, step three, you know, once you have your p-value, you need to compare that with your level of significance. So for step three, I'm gonna say that since 0 0.0398, and then I wanna compare it with 0 0.01. So 0 0.03 is definitely greater than 0 0.01, and when p is greater than alpha, that means that we do not reject the null. Okay, so we didn't reject the null, the null is the claim, so we'll say for step four, our conclusion statement that there is not enough evidence to reject the claim. Okay, so we'll do one more example. So example four says an attorney claims that more than 25% of all lawyers advertise. A random sample of 200 lawyers in a certain city showed that 63 had used some form of advertising. Alpha's 0.05, is there enough evidence to support the attorney's claim? Use the p-value method. Okay, so the claim is more than 25%. So for the null hypothesis, I'll say that p is equal to 0.25. And then I can represent more than 25 directly in the alternative. So I'll say P is greater than 0.25 there. Make sure you label that as your claim. Step two in our calculator, we'll go to one prop Z test. And we'll fill everything out. So P naught is the 0.25. X is the number of people in the sample who had used some form of advertising, so that's 63. N is the 200 lawyers. Make sure you now select the greater than P naught sign. 
and then your p-value should be 0 0.0169. Okay, step three, we just need to compare that p-value with alpha. So 0 0.0169 is definitely less than or equal to 0 0.05. So when P is less than or equal to alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. And let's see, we're rejecting the null. The claim is in the alternative. So by rejecting the null, I'm supporting the claim. So I say that there is enough evidence to support the claim.